Grazie. Grazie, grazie, grazie. grazie a te. Applauso. Mi dispiace non parlo italiano molto bene. Uh, voglio imparare. Ok. E voglio provare. Ok. okay. Good. Uh, Doing good. Okay. <laughs>
Um, as you can tell, also, I'm really in love with dark and light, chiaroscuro, and this whole idea of dra high drama in a work. And that's why I look a lot to my um, connection to Italian culture uh, as, as, a, as an important one. I learned so much from Italian art. Um, so this series, I decided to do some self-portraits in drag, using a dildo, um, and in the mirror, and seeing what happens when I sort of kind of saw these moments. And interestingly enough, um, the shadow, the shadow just appeared naturally from the lighting, but then it ended up, I, on some level for me, especially looking back, being like some kind of like taboo element, you know. And I, I was trying to get this moment of like pre-sex or post-sex, like the kind of, and that's like reality, you know, uh, when you're queer or, or you weren't born with the jump, like sometimes it's just the stuff before and the stuff after that's kind of, I don't know, real, I guess, something new. These are, uh, uh, three more works in Dildonics where I created these really large paintings uh, with these sort of monumentalized human figures in these like moments, either pre-sex or uh, post-sex. And I, I tried like thinking of them like if they were sort of alive sculptures. So these are all, I see a lot of these works as experiments. Uh, yes, they're drawings and paintings, but, but they're also um, just testing different combinations out. I really wanted to try to figure out how to do a sketch that kind of gets apart this, this idea of like just desire. Uh, it's really hard to do, you know, like how do you show like total desire? And then of course, always in my work, you know, when you make art, it's, sometimes it's hard to separate your own life. And I, and I look back and I, and I see human figures and I think about like protection and feeling like needing to protect yourself. And I might be making art about sex, but then real life comes in, you know, it's, it's not always, um, it's not always hard to avoid. This is a break in my life where I actually had a traumatic experience. So, I'm, so here I am, I'm an artist, I'm in grad school, I'm busting out all this artwork about sex and love and lust and life is great and I don't have much to worry about other than just being a passionate artist. And then we had a family crisis and we um, had a some of the the monoprints that I was still kind of like on the roll doing monoprints, all of a sudden it became about grief and what does crisis look like? Uh, uh, so we're changing gears here, okay? Uh, what does crisis look like when something really shitty happens to you or you get, you get the wind knocked out of you by some bad thing? And, uh, so then I was in grad school and I dealt with about a year of, of coping with, with suffering and, and loss and, and, and then I decided that it was time to pull up my boots and think about how to create a body of work that was somehow legitimizing my family. Like no matter what happened to my family, we are still a family and no one can take that away from me kind of thing. So I moved uh, to studying the art and science of heraldry. Uh, heraldry, as you know, is a medieval form of um, signification. Like there's a family, this family, this lineage has this power and it, it exists and it has gone through time, a heredity. So I decided to create a family a coat of arms, a, an achievement of arms for my lesbian family. So this body of artwork was called Lesbian Family Heraldry Achievement of Arms. So I started studying um, medieval heraldry from start to finish and then created a symbology for my family. So my, my family, as you know, we got the wind knocked out of us. We got our ass kicked. But at the end of the day, we're still a family. Um, and to this day, you know, years later, our daughter's back with us, so there is poetic justice. But at this time, I was like, I'm going to fight for my right to feel legitimate, and no one can take that away from me. I, and I did a series of, I guess, metaphorical self-portraits, thinking about my own notion of butch gender. Um, but then also really thinking about armor still, because I'm still kind of hung up on the heraldry mode and I'm still kind of kind of feeling that energy. Um, these pieces are called Armor Amor. Uh, obviously it's about like this, this kind of tension between, I guess, masculine and feminine, uh, having boobs, but feeling like always like protecting, um, vulnerable, but then hard. Uh, and also funny. I, I kind of wanted to start having a sense of humor about how about all this stuff, you know. Um, you know, being butch, having having armor, 
being masculine but being very feminine and having like a uterus, you know, and all these things. So these pieces are like, whoa. And I did a series of almost 100 self-portraits. And the purpose of this self-portrait series, um, if, you're getting, if you're getting a little tired, don't worry, we're almost done, okay? Everybody. Um, the purpose of this series was to see if I draw myself in a mirror a hundred times, am I going to discover who I am a little bit more? Or if I draw myself a hundred times, maybe I'll get a good one at some point. Or if I draw myself a hundred times, I'm seeing different parts of myself. So all of that in this. Similar to today, downstairs when I was doing a painting, same, same feeling. However, like in this piece, I feel like she's going to turn around and like incite a volcano or like she feels like a goddess to me in this piece, like she's just going to like incinerate something. And then she's so calm and beautiful. So it's like the same person drawn on a different day looks like a totally different person, which I think is so interesting. Thank you again for being here. Pardon me.